on to Dr. Heppenstall now, who is going to talk to us about cement. Oh, over there. Thank you. Um, and, and he just set it up under 65. Sure, you, you, you maybe don't need cement. But uh, I do have disclosures, uh, none of which are directly relevant to uh, cemented or cementless fixation. So if, if total hip arthroplasty is the operation of the century, then our femoral fixation should be reliable. It should re uh, facilitate the rapid recovery that our patients want, and it should minimize revisions both early and late. In the United States, femoral fixation still accounts for 25% of our failures in the first five years after surgery, uh, the majority of those being aseptic loosening of the femur and the remi remainder of them being um, femoral fractures. And, and the aseptic loosening is really failure of osseointegration. So we've heard about good results with short stems, and I would just want us to look at the data a little bit better because this, this has been recently published in, in the Journal of Hip Surgery, and I, I wanted to educate myself before this talk to make sure I was giving you the latest, greatest data. So I read this paper very carefully, and it looks like 105 short stems had slightly better WHO scores than 90, um, 90 standard stems uh, at three years. And that's, that sounds pretty good, and they were similar Charlie classes, similar ASA classes. But there were 2,729 patients um, uh, who were actually consented for this study, and only 195 had three-year follow-up. So I don't know how I can draw conclusions from that. And actually, there was a non-significant trend towards better preoperative WHO scores in the short stem group. So short stems may not necessarily be the answer. When you look at the other literature, lateral flare stems certainly can compromise the trochanter, as you see in the uh, upper right. And early revisions that have been described don't preserve femoral bone. So what about standard length cemented stems? They're certainly the workhorse stem in the United States, and, and apparently in Connecticut, um, they're, they're despite the, the proven subsidence and fracture risk. So uh, the registry results, however, don't match those of cement. So we know that there's an increased fracture risk without cement in patients over 65, and this comes uh, from the New Zealand registry, but there are several other publications to back it up. Uh, cement wins the British registry with fewer revisions in the cemented or hybrid cohorts compared to cementless at 30 days, 90 days, one year, and nine years. It wins in the Norwegian registry. This is the data from 1987 to 2015, far better for cement. Now, you could say, oh, this is old data. What about more recent data? And actually, if you look 2005 to 2015, the data is closer. It looks pretty good with cemented and cementless fixation looking comparable. But remember, in Norway, if you're a, a young patient, you don't, uh, I'm sorry, if you're an older patient, you don't get cementless fixation. So the data that looks good in young patients is not generalizable to the elderly. Um, and if you look at the New Zealand registry, again, uh, if you look at cemented or hybrid fixation, the rate of uh, revision per 100 component years is 0.6 for cemented, it's 0.6 for hybrid, and it's 0.9 for uncemented. Uh, if you look at loosening only, you see more early loosening with cementless. It does catch up at 10 years, and that's because you may have some actual loosening of cemented components. But early revisions are the ones that result in re-revision. So I think cement still wins. And furthermore, this analysis excludes fractures. Uh, cement wins in the bundle, right? Cementless stems have uh, more 90-day revisions for femoral fracture and fixation failure, and that's from New Zealand registry. It also looks that way in our American experience. So this is looking at our own health system data, nine hospitals, 16 100 Medicare patients, controlling for demographic differences uh, between the fixation cohorts, the cemented patients were more likely to be discharged home and they trended towards lower costs, fewer admissions, and shorter length of stay. When we looked at reoperations, there were none in the cemented group and 11 uh, in the cementless group. And although this wasn't statistically significant, it clearly was important to the patients it affected. And periprosthetic fractures and substance accounted for the majority of these reoperations. So maybe minimal, minimally invasive surgery is the problem with cementless fixation. That's what we've been hearing a little bit uh, earlier today. And certainly there's lots of data saying that MIS total hip is a risk factor for cementless failure. But patients like fast recoveries without precautions, and we need a reliable fixate. <coughs> excuse me. We need a reliable fixation strategy. And cementing through the front is reliable and routine. So I would argue maybe cementless is the problem with MIS. Uh, so our, at our institution, experience with the anterior approach correlated with an increasing use of cement from 1% in 2012 to 14% in 2015 to 2016. We've moved from seeing this as a game time decision to get out of trouble to embracing cemented stems as a reliable, rapid recovery, premium strategy for our patients greater than 70 and our osteopenic patients greater than 60. So what if you don't know or you, know, you don't remember or never learned how to cement? 
Well, <clears throat> let me break it down for you. TXA helps with the dry field, so the hypotension that people used to talk about isn't necessary. All you need is good exposure, and this is an anterior approach, and we've got a wide exposure. I, I, I think MIS means less tissue, less muscle and tendon cut, not less skin cut. Uh, you need uh, a canal plug. You need pulse lavage and ribbon gauze to pack the femoral canal and keep it dry. You need vacuum mixing and a cement gun with a pressurizer. You need cement centralizer to, depending on the stem geometry. And you do need to introduce the cement at the proper viscosity. So the French thin mantle technique, and this is actually John Cooper's idea, is a, uh, is a US surgeon friendly approach uh, to uh, getting back into cementing. Uh, the canal filling stems uh, have a thin mantle, but it achieves pressurization through the canal fill, which minimizes your malalignment. It is hard to change your version. Lots of these stems have shared brooches with press fit stems, which allows that game time decision if it's something you want to start to do. Uh, and I tell you, once you start doing this, when you get that phone call, that patient was walking around you know, three weeks after surgery, no crutches, and all of a sudden they have pain and limp, you're gonna be a lot less anxious. Um, you may graduate uh, over time to using stems that have version control that you can use to solve problems. So you're gonna hear in a minute that uh, Harry Parvatinini's uh, press fit stem has a collar, but I would say if you need a belt and suspenders, you know, how good is your belt? Uh, and the resurgence of collared stems more or less affirms that we've all realized that cementless fixation is not as reliable as we'd like it to be. So I would ask why not just relearn how to cement? Uh, I, I know resurfacing works well for some and you'll hear about that, but the question is not does it work for some, is it, does it work for you? And I would argue for me, I want to avoid early failure, I want to avoid early revisions because they have their own high complication rates and re-revisions, and bone preservation doesn't matter if you lose the abductors from metallosis. So the results are in. Uh, total hip beats resurfacing. Short stems are cute, but they're not proven to be reliable. Uh, cement beats cementless, particularly in patients 75 plus, and the resurgence of collars is gonna tell you something about cementless fixation.